Hello, everyone, and welcome to another short video on our own devices. I'm Jean Messi, and today we're having a look at yet another mechanical pocket calculator. This is a Maiwa Alex, Alexi, Alexa, I'm going to go with Alex. This was patented in 1965 by Masaharu Nara and was manufactured by the Maiwa Corporation of Japan. Now, this falls into about the same mechanical category as the Wolverine toy adding machine that we looked at previously, as well as the Magic Brain calculator, though this is a little bit more sophisticated than the former and a lot more intuitive to use than the latter. You don't need to memorize a whole bunch of nines complement operations in order to do simple addition and subtraction. So this particular example came in a telescoping cardboard box with a little instruction manual inside. Other examples I've seen came in a hinged plastic clamshell case with a clear lid. So this can calculate up to five figures with the results being given in these little windows on the front of the unit. And to add numbers, you simply push down on the appropriate button. Now this also has two other controls. We have a shift bar here, which switches between addition and subtraction. So if this is pulled towards subtraction, the windows will increment downwards instead of upwards. There's also a zeroing or clearing bar, which you operate by pulling it out and in. And what you'll notice is that when I pull the bar out, the first, third, and fifth windows will increment one unit backward, while when I release it, the second and the fourth windows will increment. And this has to do with the unique way that this is geared on the inside. And to learn more about that, let's actually take this apart and see how it works. Though I'm going to do this in the photo booth and not here, because I've taken this apart once before, and let me tell you, it is a pain in the butt to put back together. This has a whole bunch of little fiddly bits that are all spring-loaded, and it's very difficult to keep them all in place long enough for you to screw the cover back on, so I only want to do this once. Right, that this was not intended for the average consumer to take apart themselves is clearly evidenced by the fact that the disassembly screws are hidden under the metal front plate, which has to be pried off to access the screw heads. So once we remove the top cover, we can pull out the zeroing bar first, and then the addition subtraction shift bar. And now we can see the heart of the mechanism. This looks very much like the Wolverine toy adding machine and other simple mechanical calculators. Once one of the number wheels completes a revolution back to zero, a gear tooth on that wheel steps the subsequent wheel up one increment. However, unlike a lot of calculators of this type, there are no intermediate gears between the number wheels. Rather, they mesh directly with one another, such that the first, third, and fifth wheels rotate counterclockwise, and the second and fourth wheels rotate clockwise. So when you push down any of these spring-loaded buttons, it pushes down on these little green pallets, which then engage with the sprockets on the number wheel below. As you can see, each of these pallets has a little leaf spring on the back that pushes it up against the face of the calculator, and this forms part of the addition-subtraction shift mechanism. So if we look at the shift bar itself, we can see a pattern of little wedges or cams molded into the rear surface. So what happens is that when you push the bar to one side, these wedges will push down one of the two pallets flanking each number wheel, preventing it from engaging in the sprocket. So when you push down on the button, only the other pallet will engage the sprocket, turning the number wheel in one direction. And when you pull the shift bar the other way, the process is reversed, and now the other pallet engages the sprocket and turns the wheel the other way. Finally, let's have a look at the zeroing mechanism. The zeroing bar has two sets of spring-loaded metal pallets which engage in a separate set of sprockets on each number wheel. Now, each alternating sprocket is oriented in a different direction, such that when you pull the zeroing bar out, it will increment the first, third, and fifth wheels. And when you push it in, it will increment the second and fourth. And this process continues until the wheels reach zero, where the sprocket has been shaved away, meaning the pallet can no longer engage and the wheel stops rotating. Really quite a clever and elegant system mechanically, though for my money the physical execution leaves much to be desired. There's far too many little spring-loaded fiddly bits, making this a nightmare to put back together. Now apparently at some point Maiwa also manufactured a more advanced version of the Alex called the Super 7. Now I haven't been able to find very many photos of these, but they appear to have integrated a very interesting feature, which is a sliding selector beneath each button. And what this allowed you to do was choose an addition or subtraction increment of 1 to 5. So rather than pushing down each button 4 or 5 times, for example, you would simply select 4 or 5 on the slider, 
and push down the button once. Now, since I haven't been able to find very much information at all on this model, much less a photo or a diagram of the internal workings, I'm not quite sure how this worked. So if I were to hazard a guess, I would say that it probably used some sort of linear gear or a rack of variable length to allow the number wheels to be rotated multiple increments with a single stroke of the button. Now, a slightly modified version of the Alex was also manufactured under license by electronics giant Ryko under the brand named Rambler. And there were also a number of knockoff versions, including the Chadwick Atomite, which was a larger desktop version that only had addition capability and had a clearing system that worked oppositely to the Alex, where when you cycled the clearing bar, it would increment the wheels upwards towards 99999, whereupon you would hit the units button to clear everything to zero. But as clever as this is, despite the fiddly bits on the inside, this was really the last gasp of the consumer pocket mechanical calculator, because in 1967, Texas Instruments introduced the Caltech, the world's first practical electronic pocket calculator. And by the end of the 1970s, that technology had largely replaced devices like this for basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and a big shout out to my friend Doug for stumbling upon this in a thrift store and picking it up for me. Always appreciate that. I will see you next time on another video where we'll look at yet more fascinating calculators and other devices just like this one. Until then, I'm Jean Messier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.